Hello my soccer universe! I have tried to keep you a teeny bit updated with my short videos on the Euro qualifiers but I said let's look back at match day 5 and I can spend a little bit more time on a few choice games although we're probably gonna run through all the groups and then I also will tell you how the standings are in each of these groups and the projections we talk also about the winners and losers of match day 5 some of which have not even played which I find also quite interesting um i actually want to start with a team that i'm wearing which is hungary who on um, thursday got actually a pretty big win in serbia probably the game was more like a tie but in the end um, i think hungary worked well for that they found themselves down to a, a deflected shot from shalai that, that uh, was an own goal in the 10th minute at that moment you may have thought that serbia will push through but then within two minutes they score two through Varga and Orban and that gives Hungary the lead. I thought this was probably uh, of all the matches we had probably the, most, the tightest and it gives Hungary now a huge boost to qualify for the Euros and for a nation that has been in quite a downturn for a long time Hung Hungary will qualify for the third Euros in a row most likely which I think is a pretty big deal. Uh, in the same group we also had Lithuania Montenegro uh, playing out a 2-2 draw so you know it also worked out well for Serbia in, in, in a way of course you would have liked to get points if not a win uh, there to maybe be more secure but yeah top two qual qualified. The big one though was of course at least for me in the Netherlands match against Greece um, I really thought it was a potential banana skin right there there were misses for the dutch there was kind of this uh, rallying cry around the greece national team you know you had the floodings in greece so you know give them a little bit uh some, some something the dutch have not been convincing at all and then they play a first half which yeah this is probably not quite but uh was quite good from what i would expect from from, from, from the from the dutch uh Dumfries assisting three goals if you like uh, and they came all relatively quickly. I mean, Derun in the 17th and Gakpo in the uh, 31st and Weghorst in the 39th. Uh, make it 3-0 could have been more at that, at that point, but then they let it a little bit slide and uh, it was a very boring second half to say the say, say least. But the first half, that was Orani at its best and I'm not sure what to make of that. Uh, yes, they're more talented than, than, than Greece, that's for sure. But I thought that Greece will give them a little bit more resistance, honestly. Uh, in the same group, France just are the top dogs. They uh, still look all conceded like Portugal. I forgot to mention that last time, 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 time around. And they didn't need to do much against Ireland. But they just had to show their talent. And that's what they did. Germany scoring a really brilliant goal. This is Mbappé and then Thuram uh, after that make, make it 2-0. And then they just just did enough to get this over the uh, over, over the line. But there is little to suggest that France at the moment is not overall the best team in Europe. I'll take it right out there. Um, another relatively interesting one between the Czech Republic and Albania. I think um, those are the were the kind of the top two teams in their group uh, ahead of that. And the Czechs were largely the better team, had a goal to hit this little Pavar, but then Czerny, a really nicely played goal. There was also was an offside question, but a uh, nice pass by Suchik and Czerny uh, converts it. And uh, the Czechs were rolling, however, just 10 times later by Rami gets an equalizer, and the Czechs cannot find a winner. So uh, a huge boost for Albania, because you, know, you may be able to build on that. Uh, in the same group, though, Poland get the expected 2-0 win over the Faroe Islands. Um, so uh, this group tightened up quite a teeny bit. And then we had uh, Group H, where the first game was played. Kazakhstan against Finland. This was uh, 2v1. And Finland, through Antman, uh, Antman, I love that name, get uh, the win, which is a pretty big one, because, you know, Kazakhstan beat already Denmark. I think this group is a really, really, really tight one, and Finland might qualify for another Euros. I think they look in quiet, quite good. Kazakhstan, of course, have still the back door through the playoffs as well. Uh, we also had in group Denmark a easy 4-0 over San Marino, and then a really entertaining game with a crazy opening uh, spurt 17 minutes. 
uh, where Slovenia had a 2-1 lead there. Spora, Evans and Ongo Price uh, had equalized in the meanwhile. It was 3-1 through a, a nice Šeško goal just before uh, the half. Um, Evans pulls one back and Spora makes it 4-2 or in the 56th minute. But uh, Slovenia, as I said, this is a very interesting group. I still think it will be the North, no, no, the North teams. I don't know what uh, Kazakhstan and Slovenia probably will make the remaining spots. Then we go into uh, Friday. Honestly, uh, it was not a great match, but I think they were in interesting. Um, most notable, of course, Spain's complete destruction of Georgia. Morata after 22, and then uh, a quick value. Um, on goal after 20, 20, 27, more or less set the tone. After that 2 0, Georgia completely let the game slide. And Spain are just a team. This is typically Spain. When they smell blood, they gonna go, go for it. Dani Olmo, another Morata goal, uh, make it already 4 0 at the half. Then, uh, goalie mistake uh, <laughs> allows Georgia to pull one back right after the half. However, that was never gonna be a, com a comeback. It was torrential rain, but Alvaro Morata gets his third. Nico Williams at 168, and then Yamin Lamal. Uh, <laughs> Lamin Yamal comes on and he's the youngest player forever for Spain and he's also the youngest goal scorer for Spain. He gets the seventh goal and if you see Yamal, he looks every bit of a 16 year old that he is, but he already has scored for Spain and let's see where, where this will go for uh, him. I think it's a very intriguing talent. Uh, we had in the same group Scotland getting in a 3 0 away win to um, uh, Cyprus. The goals came early McTominay are in the sixth, and uh, Portus in the 16th, and McGinn in the third. So the third. An easy win. Scotland still on a very good unbeaten run in that qualifying campaign. Also looking set for Germany. Speaking of Germany, I probably should have mentioned that earlier before we go further. Germany lost 1 4 uh, at home to Japan. Hansi Flick is in serious trouble. I just wanted to have mentioned uh, that one as well. Um, let's go to Group D, where Croatia had an easy win over Latvia. Uh, definitely helped that after three minutes, Petkovic uh, gets a free kick uh, in. Uh, and then it's Ivanesic, uh, Petkovic gets Gelkes and then Kramaric and Pajalic add more. So Croatia have to play a little bit catch up in their group, but I think they're looking very well on track in the same group. We had the, the big one between Turkey and Armenia, uh, where Turkey, of course, controlled most of the game. However, Armenia took the lead through Dacian in the 49th minute and they almost hang, hang on to it, but then, uh, you know, a counter a, a shot is saved by, by, by the goalie, but a rebound bound from far out, Yildirim gets a late equalizer through a ferocious crowd. This game was not played in Istanbul because they, you know, of political tensions between those two countries. It was played in a smaller stadium to have a little bit more control over it. But yeah, uh, definitely points drop for Turkey. And now you, you have to start asking questions. Armenia are not out of this group either so far. Then uh, I would say we go to Group J, where we had uh, Bosnia beating Liechtenstein 2-1. Uh, I mean, after 20 minutes, it was already 2-0. Dzeko and then a, a, a Luschinger own goal, which also was a shot by Jake Dzeko, but it was just one weird one. However, uh, Sandra Wolfinger scored the goal of probably all of them. Uh, that, that they had a wonderful volley uh, from way outside of the box. Watch it. It's worth worth it. It's also disappointing that Bosnia could not add more on uh, to the scoreline. Uh, in the same group, Luxembourg got a pretty big 3-1 win over Iceland, so they are still in contention there. Uh, I have to say the first penalty, the penalty was a little bit quick, uh, quick question to, to me. Uh, a 2-0 down, Iceland went one down, pulled one of them back, but quickly Luxembourg made it 3-1. And then Slovakia and Portugal was a really, really tight game that was only, only decided by the brilliance of one Bruno Fernandes who took a shot from far, far out. They probably should not have gone in, but that was, was the difference. And also that probably Cristiano should have been sent off for a rather rough challenge. I mean, it was not intention to hurt, but the way he he, he went in, I think he would have well deserved that red card. Uh, but it ends with a 1-0 for Portugal and like France, Portugal 
all wins, no goals, Kanko conceded. They are among the strongest teams heading into uh, the Euros, at least from the qualifying record. So far, nothing really upsetting in, in a way. Maybe with the exception of Han, Han Hungary winning in Sorbs. Sor but yesterday, while there were no real upsets, there were some weird re results because the only wins, and I said already in one minute video, came in Group F. Austria's group, who did not play, and Austria only played a 1 1 against Moldova. A horrible showing, to be honest, but you know, it's a friendly game. Let's see. Uh, but they were hoping that Sweden dropped at least points in Estonia, which did not happen. Sweden got a 5 0 win, and also Austria lead, uh, lose the group in the table uh, thanks to Belgium winning 1 0 in Alsace. having to work hard for that win, to be honest. In, in the end, the Carrasco uh, deflected shot. That gets them the win. I mean, it was a Bakayoko Tuk Tuk and Carrasco deflects it into that uh, weird one. But Azerbaijan had chances, so it could have gone the other, other way. And um, Sweden, Gyokares, Kulusevski, Isaac, and then Kweissen and Klesson. Very late, late on, but at the half it was already 3 0. It was really, really easy for them. Um, we have to, the, the two games that I was watching out of, of course, the Group C games. Uh, Group C is a really, really tight one and again proved with uh, home games for uh, the two outsiders, the, the two strong outsiders potentially. Ukraine, North Macedonia, although after England beat North Macedonia 7-0, I'm not so sure what to expect from them. Uh, oh, I was not. <laughs> Meanwhile, I know what to expect from them. Ukraine against England. Uh, I actually think that when Sinjenko gave Ukraine a lead, yes, England had a lot of control but barely had any chances and a complete lack of creativity. I was again puzzled with the lineup that Southgate put out. I mean, Harry Maguire is on very low conf confidence, Henderson is basically in retirement, and you have one shoot Bellingham who doesn't know what he's doing, and then uh, you find yourself to a nicely played goal. I mean, the way uh, Conor Plier, uh goal goes down and cuts, cuts back to Sinchenko, who said, this is my ball, this is my ball, was really nicely played. And there was fervent home support in Poland for Ukraine. Um, more women and children, it was a little bit higher pitch, but uh, fervent home support. And I thought this was actually not that undeserved because you, you, Ukraine played well. Uh, England then stepped it up a little, a, a, a little bit, but uh, Again, creativity la lacking. And where did the creativity come from? Well, Harry Kane dropped in a sixth position, more or less, or maybe eight, to lob a ball onto Carl Walker, who was not offside, and then running on to goal, and he gets his first uh, goal for the English national team. Second half was then, I thought the first, first half was, well, was intense. Second half was a little bit of a letdown, to be honest. Um, uh, Saka, with a nice push turn save, uh, hits the crossbar. I thought that England might get, get, get it. Ukraine, you could, you could see they were just hanging on for the draw, which they got. Hanging on for the draw. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the way to describe Spalletti's debut for Italy. Um, tentative first half. Um, nothing really exciting. Yes, advantage Italy. But you you, you you see this a team that is trying to find itself. He then brought on Saniolo for Politano at halftime. And it almost immediately played, uh, played, uh, paid off, not played off. Uh, when Saniolo chested a ball towards uh, Barella, who was probably the best player for Italy, um, who takes... One times the shot, it goes on to, on, onto the crossbar, and as he takes a shot, Immobile is not offside. The defender then steps, steps, steps out, uh, and Immobile, Captain Immobile, <laughs> uh, converts and makes it one nil for Italy in 47 seconds a minute. And at that moment, I thought this should give Italy some conf con uh, confidence. Everything but Italy was tentative. They did not step it up. I think they should have. Because if they play them with a little bit more uh, seriousness, they might actually get that win. But they were more or less put in a little bit on the backside for like from the uh, when uh, North Macedonia made many made, made first changes. Uh, Di Marco gave off. Uh, I mean, potentially could have been even sent send off. Gave I think a, a, a weird free kick that Bardi then converts really really nicely. Elmas had a good chance before then, and then Italy tried to step it up and suddenly played. And uh, but Macedon put all the forces back. But then they had a lot lot of lot of control, lot of passes. Really tried, couldn't 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 get it done. It's a whole lot of work for Spalletti, and Euro qualifying is everything but guaranteed at this moment for Italy. The last group I want to talk about is of course then uh, Group I, um, where 
Kosovo and Switzerland played out a 2-2 draw. Similar, Switzerland had a one millimeter for Euler and had very much control of the of that game. But then Morishi gets an equalizer, uh, which is then re and Switzerland then reestablishes the, the lead. And they really thought they had won it. It was a Bramani own goal, but you know the shot came from Freuler. But if Bramani goes on in and lobs it over the goalie, it's not going to be there. But then Morishi again in deep in stoppage time gets the equalizer for the Kosovo. So Switzerland is not among the winners. Uh, and also Romania and Israel missed a big chance by playing out a 1-1 one, one draw. Romania large, largely by the team, was, was a really nice equalizer by Gluch uh, to get it 1-1. One, one. And so that group is also still wide open. So let's look at the standings. Uh, we have here groups A and C. Group A and B is, this looks all like Scotland and Spain to be honest. Georgia probably is out there. Norway have, I think, have an outside chance. Group B, France and the Netherlands, Greece has the tick for the playoff but I think with the win over Greece the Netherlands look good 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 again Ireland will desperately need a win against one of these nations uh, at the moment it's England in, in Ukraine ahead of Italy however you see the games played it's a, a little bit more closer than the group looks like it will be a huge one between Italy and Ukraine coming up we'll talk about that one for sure but Italy's chances are a little bit sliding Turkey still leading the group, but the Croatia has two games in hand. So I guess you could say Turkey uh, is, is more or less in second place, as is as in the Uzbekistan. Armenia is not out of this group, and Wales, without having played, I think the results also fell a little little bit their way with Turkey and Armenia not getting a win. Czechs and Albania still on top, with Poland uh, being in a good position. The Czechs and Poles should make this one. Uh, the group F. Still very much point to Belgium and Austria. However, Sweden is lingering around. There's another big matchup coming out there. Uh, I can all or say all Belgium and Austria match the results. However, every result was just slightly better by, done by Belgium. And that shows as well here. Uh, Hungary now in control of Group G ahead of Serbia, but I think the rest will not get involved there. Group H is a wide open one. I mean, Finland leads it by two points, but then Denmark, Slovenia, Kazakhstan, ah, it's really, really tight. I would say Finland and Denmark with a potential surprise by Kazakhstan. Group I should be Switzerland, but whoever finishes second is for me wide open. Romania, Israel, uh, it, that's, that will be between those two. And then Portugal also very clear, but then Slovakia or look Luxembourg, maybe Bosnia can get in there, but I don't quite see it. You also see here potential playoffs. I would look more at the expected playoffs uh, at the moment, um, which the first one maybe looks like a Wales Norway match, match of it will be the second one is probably the B, it's probably the most interesting one. A Bosnia against Ukraine, I think that's Ukraine's pathway to the Euros. And the bottom one looks like Greece's, but let's see about that. Winners and losers, you see Hungary, Finland and Slovenia are big winners, as is Poland and the Netherlands, who are kind of back on track. Uh, note that Wales is, is a winner, despite not having played on the other side. The losers, Kazakhstan, Lula losing home to Finland was a big one, Georgia is out of it, and Greece also took, took, took a big damper there. Austria has has not played, but since the other other two containers were winning, of course, their chances did not improve at all. Overall favorites for the Euros, before we look at the final, uh, for the next matches, um, is France, England and Germany now dropped more. Because Germany is not in a really good, good position. They only are there that high because they have already qualified. But you see already Belgium, Spain, Croatia, Netherlands, Italy. Although Italy's qualifying uh, fate, as I said, is rather shaky at this moment. Scotland, though, looks really, really good at, at this moment. So now let's finally look at the upcoming games. Tonight there's already Ireland against Netherlands. The last guess for uh, Ireland. We also have Finland against Denmark. This will also tell us a whole lot of um, how good are Finland. Uh, so those are the two that I will pick up for now. Maybe Albania, Poland, because Albania need to back, back it up. Uh, if they win against Poland, Poland is in real trouble. But yeah, those are the three that I would point, point out. And, um, Monday, not much. Maybe Armenia, Croatia, because Armenia could get back in. Portugal, I would expect an easy win over Luxembourg. So, uh, and maybe Iceland, Bosnia is probably the biggest one in there because uh, both of them desperately need the wins. But not an exciting uh, <laughs> offering there. But it's more exciting. On Tuesday, we have Italy, Ukraine at the San Siro. It's about as big as it gets for the Italians. 
Uh, at San Siro, where they have not done really, really well. And then we also have the small matter of Sweden against Austria, which is a must win for Sweden. If Austria can get, get, get a draw, I think they more or less have qualification secured. Uh, it needs to be then really go badly for them. So that's it for me from match day five. Let me know which games you uh, enjoyed. Uh, how do you see qualification going? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.